Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to speak with you guys today about a lot of questions that I've been getting lately um, about players, packing players, when to sell, when to keep, and I wanna talk with you guys a lot about that today. Uh, I'm talking about when to sell players based on where they're gonna be rising to or when to keep players, when to buy your team, when to sell your team, all kinds of stuff like that is early on in FIFA, and that is a very important question. All those questions are very important because people want to know, hey, I just packed this guy. When do I sell him? Do I need to sell him now? Isn't he going to be rising up? What's he going to rise to? Is it worth me holding on to this card, etc.? So I want to talk through some of those things today. We're going to look at a lot of different types of cards. We're going to look at 88 rated that are almost SVC fodder at this point, um, other 86, 87 rated cards. Um, we're going to look at... Um, higher ranked cards, guys like Aguero, guys like Sun, and maybe talk through some of those situations as well because it's, it's kind of different and it's kind of personalized where, to each person and where you're at, where your FIFA Ultimate Team is at, and where uh, your coin total is at and everything. Uh, basically, you're standing in FIFA with your team and your coin total and everything like that. So I want to get into some of those situations today, and I feel like whatever situation you're in, your question should be answered. Uh, through these uh, segments today. So the first thing I want to talk about is a lot of people come and ask me, this is just an example, Aguero is just an example, but he, let's say you pack somebody who is a meta player who is probably 50,000 coins or above, somebody that would rise in the hype after the full game release into the first weekend league because it's a meta player, a very usable player, and a very quality player on FIFA. So my example right here is Aguero. We're looking right now, 295,000 coins. Again, for most of these cards, you, all the graphs look like this. A continual rise as we get further and further into the game. Some cards have spiked up to very high values already. Um, guys like Bale, guys like Mbappe are very, very high already. And it seems like they almost can't go any higher. They probably will. Just based on where this game is at and we know the trends of how this game works. So for those kind of guys, um, the main... The main thing here when you're asking this question or you're thinking, when, should I sell this player? For a guy like Aguero, for a meta player, you want to ask yourself, how many coins do I have? If you have 30, 40, 50,000 coins, anywhere under 100K, and you pack this Aguero card, and you're thinking, okay, this card is 300K right now on the market, I could go sell this card and have 400,000 coins in my club. Uh, again, Aguero is just our example. You kind of have to make that decision for yourself in a way as if I sell this card, am I going to be able to use the coins and make up that value that Aguero, if I waited to sell Aguero in two weeks, would I be able to make that difference in value from now until then with the coins that I get from trading? So let's say Aguero right now is 295. Let's say for the first weekend league in two to three weeks time, he's around 400K. Just a guess. Not sure if we'll actually get there. Let's say he's 400,000 coins. Can you make yourself the difference between then, between now and then, the 100,000 coin difference from 300 to 400, I'm using PS prices, can you make that difference in coins in two weeks by trading? A lot of the answers, I mean, if you're watching this channel, you're probably interested in trading. You're probably interested in making more coins in FIFA. So I would say yes, you might be able to make 100,000 coins off of trading in the next couple of weeks, especially if you have a card like this, selling it, giving that resources to yourself, using those resources to be able to trade. So that's kind of the, the thing that you have to think about. If you're if you're somebody who's really focused on gameplay and you want to try out the Agro card and you want to play with that Agro card and just sell him when he gets high and you already have a lot of coins, then maybe it's not worth selling for you. But it kind of, a lot of these situations it really comes down to, especially for the meta cards, let's look at Sun as well. Let's say you packed uh, Youngman's Sun. Is he going for like 400k right now? Oh, I'm way off. He's going for like 450. Oh, he's even higher. Oh, my man's 500k. Wow. Okay. Sun is basically 500,000 coins. Uh, you have to think to yourself, this card's very high. It could even go higher still. 87 rated. Very hyped up with the position change. But could you use 500,000 coins? If you already have a million, you might, as, you might as well just use this card. Throw it in your team if you can and then sell it when it gets higher in the next couple of weeks during the weekend league, which is when the prices are the highest for some of these players. So again, the main thing with especially meta cards like this, you pack a big boy, you have to kind of look at your, your, your club. All right, I'm on this amount of coins. Would I be able to use this card 
or what are my goals? If I sell this card, can I buy the team that I want to buy or maybe, maybe make some extra upgrades to the team that I want to buy, which then those values could go up in price. That's another thing to think about um, before that first week in league. Or do I want to hold on to that card, maybe use that card and sell when it's high or just keep writing it out and using it? So that's the first situation that I wanted to look at. Uh, kind of look at if, if you pack a meta card. I would even consider guys like this to be Firmino, uh, Fabinho. Anybody who's like 50, even a guy like Havertz, um, he's a little bit on a smaller scale, but Havertz is what? 30,000 coins and he continues to rise. A lot of people think this card's going to go higher. If you pack a guy like Havertz, do you need the coins? It's only about 30,000. Could he fit in your team? You know, it's just kind of that situation where you have to kind of decide for yourself, is this card going to keep going up in price? Now, I know a lot of you guys might have questions. How high could he go? You know, how high could Havertz go? And that's the big question. That's a question for everybody. We don't always know how high these cards are going to go. Is Sun going to stay at 500K? Or is he going to rise up another 200K when the full game is released? Is there going to be continual hype that is added onto this card? Will he go even higher? That's the big question that we all aren't too sure of. It seems like he would based on the trends that we know from past FIFAs and the way that this market it works, um, it seems like he would go higher. Uh, most things that are meta and OP and usable for Weekend League are gonna go higher, but it's, there's still a little bit of a level of uncertainty there. So meta usable cards, that's where I'm looking with those. Um, that's the most common one, I think. Now the next one I have is a lot of people ask about, and a lot of you guys wanna know, about guys like, a guy like Marco Verratti. 86 rated, he's basically SBC fodder. If we look at some of the cheapest players by rating, which is one of my favorite pages on this Footbin website, 86 rated players, 8.9K. Verratti is down here and one of the cheapest 86 rated players in the game at this time. Is it good to hold on to these types of guys or should you be selling them even for the 84s? 84s, I would say probably just get out. 85s, probably about the same. But if you pack one of these SBC guys, um, do you hold it? Do you keep it? What's the move with some of those? So let's look at Verratti for a second. I want to talk about him. Basically, in years past, a lot of these cards that are just SBC fodder, that are not super usable in-game, that um, are basically just cheap because there's no SBCs out, people don't really want to put them in their teams. They're just on the market and they're there because, people, um, because of their rating, basically. And the real question is now, is it worth me holding onto this card because he will rise for SBCs? Or should I just sell him and take the coins? Now, I think that in Verratti's case, uh, this FIFA might be a little bit different because in years past, I would have said, well, we're going to have Icon SBCs. Maybe if you pack that card, you already have a lot of coins. Store that in your club. Wait for the Icon SBCs to, to come. But this year, we're not going to have Icon SBCs. I mean, we're not even guaranteed to have a lot of SBCs early on. Last year, the first Icon SBCs weren't for a couple of months. We had the Player of the Month um, hazard card last year that came out and required some high rateds. And you saw a lot of those prices go up then. I don't know if you remember that. There were a lot of high rated cards that went up then because it required a high rated squad. I could see a similar thing happening with the Lewandowski player of the month that will come out on the full game release. That could be an opportunity for some of these high rated cards, the SBC fodder high rateds, to go up in price. Uh, right now, I see Parejo, as, according to Footbin, is one of the cheapest 86s. It says that he is under 9K. Let's see if that's true. He is not. He's right around 10K, I'm guessing, with the rest of these. Um, but, the, you know, it just all depends on what they require for that Lewandowski SBC. I would assume that they would require some, some higher rated cards, maybe an 84 and an 85 rated squad, make that SBC cost somewhere around four to 500K, possibly. But that SBC might not have the hype that a player of the month hazard would have had last year. So the only thing that scares me about storing some of these cards in your club is, could you take the 9 or 10K that you get from an 86 rated player right now, maybe it's 12,000 coins, could you take that money and reinvest it and make coins off of it from trading or buy it or upgrade a player in your team that will then go up in value for weekend league? Could you do that? Use those coins to do that? Or could you stash that play in your club and wait for them to rise for an SBC. I just don't know what kind of SBCs we could see. Maybe we see a once to watch SBC, but in my eyes, the SBC that's gonna make these cards the move the move the most early on in FIFA would be a player of the month SBC, whether it be uh, Premier League or Bundesliga. And we're already guaranteed to have a pretty high rated Bundesliga 
uh, Player of the Month SBC with Lewandowski. So this one is up to you again as well. If I would honestly say on this side of things, I would lean towards selling these SBC fodder players, even guys down here that are like 87s, 88s, and 89s. Sergio Busquets, you get him for 26,000 coins, you might as well just sell him. You know, you might as well just sell them because these pro these guys are probably going to be the same price in a week from now, right before the full game release on the Thursday, right before they're probably going to be around the same, maybe one or two K more because people are investing for Lewandowski. It all depends on how they price Lewandowski if these cards move and it's only one SBC. Okay. It's only one player of the month SBC. Yes, we'll have a Premier League player of the month SBC coming after that. But I don't see a lot of a ton of movements with these cards. You might as well just take the coins and put those coins into your team or use those coins to trade. That's kind of how I feel about the SBC fodder stuff. As we get closer to those SBCs and to more SBCs that will be requiring high rated players, then I will say maybe you have to pay an extra, again, one or two or three K per card for some of these high rateds, but just stash one in the club then. Wait to stash cards in the club until we get closer to SBC time not just uh don't just have them sit there now and have them collect dust and they're not going to be gaining a very high percentage than if you just sell them use those coins to trade or to put into your team so that's how i feel about the sbc fodders i think that you should basically in every single case if it is a cheap uh card for its rating i think you should just get it out get rid of it and um yeah that's what i think about the sbc fodders and then the last big kind of section of area of players or category, I guess you could say, would be ones to watch players. Now, specifically, I think of Ndombele uh, in this category. Ndombele is somewhere around 22,000 coins. That's where he's been chilling a lot on PS4. He's been from like 15K up to 22K. He fluctuates a little bit. Um, and we'll talk about some more stuff on what could happen on Tuesday with a lot of supply entering the market with the introduction of the um, pre-order access onto the game. So we'll talk about that as well with some of these ones to watch cards. But a lot of these ones to watch cards, I've been telling people to actually hold, to be honest, because here's why. I know you're gonna be holding until probably Thursday where you would wanna sell into the hype or continue holding. But when these cards do out, go out of packs, I think with this Endombele card, I think exactly along the lines of Fred last year. Fred last year on Tuesday, when the pre-order release came out was 18,000 coins, 16 or 18,000 coins. Fred got a wants to watch card. I think Ndombele has just as good a shot to get a wants to watch as Fred. And Endom and Fred last year went from 16,000 coins to 35,000 coins in a matter of three or four days after his gold card went out of packs. And again, I think this Ndombele card has exactly the same amount of hype as Fred did last year with his move to United. Ndombele has been playing for Spurs uh, but it's just the French links and his card stats are what make him OP inside of FIFA. And he's got the FIFA hype, but he also has some IRL hype as well. Speaking from a Spurs fan, just saying. Um, but for a lot of the ones to watch cards, I've been telling people to stash them in the club and just wait. Because even a guy like Brandt, I've been telling a few people to store Brandt in the club too because he has wants to watch potential. Ooh, he's actually he's actually down in price a good amount right now. Hello, Mr. Brandt. What are you at? 19,000 coins. That's a bit low. That's a couple thousand coins lower than normal uh, for this card. So even for these types of cards, you kind of have to evaluate your situation. Could you use the 20,000 coins right now to go make an investment or to go trade um, with cards and make more coins? Are you needing to build a team? Or... Should you be taking these cards, chucking them in your club if you already have like a really solid team set up, you're happy with your team, and you're just looking to stash some cards in the club to make more coins and possibly take some risks with investing for once to watches, you can think of it that way as well. So Brandt, guys like Wambi Saka, if you pack a Wambi Saka, just hold him in the club, especially because his price range has not been updated as of the time that I record this video. Same with some of those other guys that have not had price range updates. Um, I'm thinking of... Um, guy like De Young, the Inform De Young, literally, uh, there are none on the market as of right now. This Inform card, I think his price is like 120,000 coins. He's not on the market. If you have a De Young, please hold that card. Please, please hold that card. Even a guy, uh, I don't want to look at Mbabu because he's very low rated and I feel like his price could drop. Another guy that's extinct though is Alexander St. Maximin. 
if I could find his card. I'm just going to call him the Gucci Headband because that is a lot easier to say than his full name. Uh, but this card is extinct right now. He is low rated. But honestly, if I were you, I would hold on to this card. Right wingers in the prime are all inflated. This guy has the hype. He's got the cool in-game image with the, the headband. And he's got very good card stats for a starter team, for a starter card. Even though he might not be too much more than 10,000 coins, uh, he should get a price range update any day. And instead of selling him for 10k when he's extinct, you might be able to get 15 to 20k out of that card after his price kind of settles down with the panic selling of everybody who invested in that card. Um, kind of similar to a ones to watch situation. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Again, in summary, for a lot of these situations, when somebody is asking, hey, I have this card. When do I sell it? Should I keep it? Is he going to go up a lot in the next couple of days? When do I sell it? A lot of those meta cards, the OP cards, like we looked at Aguero and Sun, those you're going to want to probably... Um, I think you're going to want to sell those, especially if they're very high dollar, unless they have ones to watch potential like a Griezmann or a Hazard, um, then I would probably just keep them in the club, ride them out, use that card, and then sell them during ones to watch when they're out of packs. Um, but you can use those high dollar cards and you can use those coins so much to invest and to make more coins that it's almost not worth holding them in your club because you'll make more coins with investing than you will with keeping them in your, in your club. But again, you have to evaluate yourself. If you're a gameplay guy, that might not be the case. Um, and then 18,000 for this card, man, he's dropping. And then um, we looked at the SBC fodder cards. SBC fodder cards, I think you just get out. You can buy them back later for a similar price or a smidgen more. You'll still be able to invest in those cards and make money off of them. And they will do the job perfectly for you as a cheap SBC card to use in SBCs later down the line. Um, and then also the ones to watch cards, which most of the time I recommend holding unless it's a ones to watch card that I don't actually think will get a ones to watch. Uh, then you probably just want to take the coins and sell when it's hyped up and pretty high. So again, we're going to be talking about some specific sell times in videos pretty soon as well, because we have squad battle rewards Sunday night, early Monday morning. If you're in the UK Sunday night for me, we have squad battle rewards. That is a big time on the market. I'm interested to see how the market reacts to that. It'll kind of maybe give us a taste to see what happens on Tuesday if any of those prices will move on Tuesday as well. So if you enjoyed this video and this helped you out at all, press the thumbs up button. Comment down below if you have any questions. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.